I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on transverse versus longitudinal waves. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So this is oversimplifying it a little bit, but there are two general categories of waves, and most waves can be broken down into one or the other of these. Now there are some exceptions to this, and there are some more complicated waveforms, um, but for the most part what we're going to be studying are transverse and longitudinal waves, and you can see an example of them right here. But to help express what this means, so we've got this idea of to make a transverse wave, you wiggle your hand up and down on a slinky, and to make a longitudinal wave, you kind of pulse your hand back and forth on a slinky. Um, to explain that a little bit further and to see it in motion, I've got a video for us to watch. So take a short second to watch this video on transverse versus longitudinal waves. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is along the direction in which the wave travels. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. In a transverse wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. Okay, so we can see in the video that in order to make a longitudinal wave, um, we have to vibrate our hand back and forth. Um, it's more like a pulse. And really what we're doing is the vibration is parallel to the direction of propagation. The direction of propagation is just the direction the wave is moving or traveling. So if the wave is traveling this way to the right, then our vibrations need to be to the left and right. In other words, parallel to the direction of propagation. Now, in this type of wave, um, expansions are sometimes called rarefactions, and compressions are usually almost always called compressions. And wavelength is going to be measured from compression to compression, or rarefaction slash expansion to expansion. Now, what I mean by that is the part where the, way, uh, the material is kind of spread out like this to the part where the material is spread out. That would be the expansion to expansion. Compression would be the kind of most compressed or most squeezed version all the way to the other most squeezed or squished version. Now in transverse waves, the direction of vibration is different. Instead of being parallel to the direction of propagation, it's going to be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So what that means is, is if our wave is traveling to the right again, then in order to make a transverse wave, the vibration must be up and down um, or at a right angle to this direction of propagation. Some examples of transverse and longitudinal waves. Um, there are actually two types of seismic or earthquake waves. The primary version is longitudinal, and the secondary ones that come out are transverse. Um, other examples of transverse waves are light or electromagnetic waves, uh, and then up and down slinky waves, where you're actually physically moving your hand up and down like that. Now, longitudinal waves, the most common example is sound waves, um, but another example would be back and forth slinky waves. This would be where you're pulsing your hand back and forth to make a slinky wave. Now, we would think that transverse waves um, also include water or ocean waves, but in reality, we'll see in a second, uh, ocean waves are kind of a hybrid of the two. Um, so they don't really fit into one single category. So if we ever ask you for examples of transverse or longitudinal waves, do not include ocean waves because it is neither. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to a different screen and show you a quick video on um, longitudinal waves, then on transverse waves, and finally on water waves. So a longitudinal wave, this would be an example of a longitudinal wave. Now we can see here this little red particle is moving back and forth, and so in general we can see that this wave is propagating over here to the right, um, but the particles themselves only vibrate a little short period of time, uh, and they just go back and forth, and it's parallel to the direction of movement. And so we can see how movements back and forth can actually relate in a wave pulse that travels down um, the air. So this is really what air looks like when sound is traveling through it. You get these pulses that kind of go. An example of a transverse wave would be something like this, where we can see each of these particles is moving up and down, and each one you think of it as pulling on one next to it, and as a result we get this wave that kind of travels down the way. So we can see that this wave right here, oop, shrink that, um, travels kind of down the, the way if you focus on one wave going that way. All right, and then last but not least, we have an ocean wave. 
Now, notion wave is a combo of the two. It both goes parallel um, to the direction of propagation and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. In reality, we can see that this particle really just moves in a circle. So if you follow this around, hopefully this doesn't mess it up too much, we can see that it's going to follow a circular path in this case. And so that's what's going on with ocean waves, and which is why they're neither transverse nor longitudinal. They're actually kind of a weird combo of the two. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. One to two sentence summary and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.